What's good everybody, this is Silas from SilasBeats.com. Today I wanted to speak about why I make so many um, videos for TV, right? So my music production career started in 2007 and basically when I started making beats, I was making beats for myself as everybody always does. Um, what ended up happening was that, you know, I started running into a couple of artists, I, you know, pass beats out much like how everybody does. Um, and then I started to realize, look, I could actually make some money doing this because it became a case of can I get some beats to how much do you charge for beats, right? So the conversation, when the moment the conversation changed, I was able to go, yo, I can make some money. I think my first beat I must have sold for it's like 50 Rand or something tiny, it was something ridiculous like that. But the moment I started doing that, I was like, yo, I can make money doing this. Um, I did that for a couple of years. I remember I was still at varsity at the time. So at university, I would hit up people and I would just be like, yo, man, um, would you like to get some beats? Um, they would be like, cool, let's hear what you got. They pick out things here and there, you know, they might want changes here and there. But for the most part, I was able to put the beats together for them. What happened in 2012 is that I moved to Joburg. When I was in Joburg, um, I realized that my efforts to get music to people was sort of in vain. Um, I made CDs, I remember I moved around with beat CDs and the moment I got my car, I would go through to radio stations and um, I would literally just pass out beats to the rappers that were coming through. I knew when the hip hop shows were, were, would be on. So I'd take a drive through, I'd see, you could always see rappers because they would move in groups, right? I'd approach the group and be like, yo, um, I'm a beat maker. I can hear you guys are freestyling or you're about to go on your show or you've just come from your show. Can I pass out some beats, you know? whatever i'd pass them out you know i might people might hit me up whatever it is but that was basically what i was doing i realized that that was not sustainable just that i wasn't getting for the amount of work the amount of leg work i was putting in i wasn't getting the um, i wasn't seeing my return on investment in all of that that i was doing so um, i remember being in the studio with um uh, Justin, Jay Lawless, and we were talking about different ways, different revenues and whatnot. And I'd actually asked him whether he'd gotten his stuff placed somewhere. And he had told me that there was another producer who was getting quite a bit of their stuff placed on TV. And I was like, man, that would actually be pretty epic. Um, I remember I was a big FIFA fan at the time. And I, had, I remember switching on, I forgot which FIFA it was, but I remember seeing Lock and Vol. They had Sun in My Pocket on a track. And I was like, man, this would be a massive payday. Why not try and do something along these lines? So I started hitting different people up. I hit up camera crews. I hit up um, a couple of people, right? And they kind of led me all to Norm, which is now known as Capasso. I went to the offices in Randburg. I remember dragging Justin along with me and we spoke to the guys. And they were like, look, these are all the different publishers we know. Hit them up, see what they can do for you. So started, I started sending emails out to these people saying, yo, we've got music. This, this is the type of work we've done. We want to do more stuff. We can send you stuff so you can listen to. And we started sending stuff through. Some of them were happy with it. Others were like, Ugh, we don't really want it. Others were just not taking any new people. Um, so yeah, the, 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 that's basically how the story went. Um, some time went by and oh, we weren't really convinced um, that this was the way to go for us. But what started happening was that we started getting royalty checks randomly and then a little bit of money would, would filter through and we we're like man hold on there's something here let's double down on this for a bit so for a while we locked in every single week just knocking out beat after beat after beat setting up all these albums and then pushing it through to the, the music publisher they would then hit us back and be like yo we like this stuff we're gonna use it um i remember we got our music in um in an adidas advert and that actually had an upfront payment and we were like man there's money here <laughs> right wasn't a hang of a lot i think we got 3k each um, up front and then over and above that there was a couple of other opportunities that we um, that we got right and then obviously the royalties at the end of the day so there was quite a bit of cash there in that um, we didn't really expect anything from it but from there we started to build what we started to realize is as the years went by people started to understand our music more and actually want it more right and as the years went by the amount of revenue we got became more and more and more rightly so we had to share it between the music publisher, him and I. Um, and he and I would get, would share the producer's portion. So it ended up being quite a little. Um, since then, I've kind of delved into it a bit more myself, um, tried to get a couple of albums out there, uh, both exclusively and non-exclusively into TV programs, into commercials, into all sorts. I've even tried games, I haven't been so successful there. But what I have seen is that the money there is a constant 
Um, it doesn't come through as frequently as the money that I'd get from, say, bringing someone through the door here to record or get beats or whatever it is, but it's a nice paycheck to get each year or each um, distribution period. You know, every couple of months, I will get a bit of money from it. The reason why I do it so much is because I know in the long run, this is going to be a lot more um, self-serving. It's going to be, the return on investment is definitely going to be a lot longer because for a track that are these tracks that I made in 2013, 14, 15 that are only being placed now in 2022, what does that mean for tracks that need to be utilized in 2030, right? They might be going to stuff that I made a good, you know, 10, 15 years ago prior to that time. So the beats that I'm making now, as much as I might feel like they might not fit, they might only be used in 10 years time. And I'm okay with that. All it means is that I'm investing for the future. I'm just making majorly, majorly, majorly long-term investments for the future, which I'm okay with. So um, that's the majority of the reason behind it. Um, and it works quite nicely because when I bring people through the door here to do whatever we do in studio, that's very really short-term money. That's money between the upfront payment that they get to be in here for whatever the track does, you know, getting the track out there, I might get new opportunities. More people see the studio, they then come in and they want to just continue that process, which is fine. That's me running the studio. But over and above that, I get that mid to long-term income in that um, I now have royalties that I'm generating. And that money is a lot, long, lot more long-term, but it's a lot more solid. Yeah, so if you have any questions about, you know, getting your music on to TV, getting it into, you know, to different music publishers, whether it be your commercial, um, you know, whether it be for commercial music or library music, whether it be an essay, whether it be based abroad, these are all things that, I mean, I, you know, we, can, we can start a conversation, you know, hit me up, let me know in the comments if there's any, and if you have any questions with regards to this, and I'm happy to, to answer, you can also reach out to me in WhatsApp, um, links to get a hold of me, everything's in the description. Uh, let me know and let's keep the conversation going. Peace.